You're listening to the Motherhood Unstressed Podcast, and I'm your host, Liz Carlisle. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm so glad that you're here, as always. And this week, we are diving deep into body shame and dieting and body image and even just the way we speak to ourselves about our appearance. And I wanted to do a show on this topic because I think that it's something that all of us have dealt with in our lives or maybe you're dealing with right now. You know, how we speak to ourselves, how we see ourselves, how we place value on ourselves um, based on our physical bodies. And I think that, you know, it's not the easiest subject to touch on, but I want to highlight women who are out in the world actively changing the dialogue and and working with women one-on-one and through the work that they create. And that is what my guest does. Her name is Sarah Stites, and she is the creator of Wavelength, which is a holistic, compassionate, science-forward approach for anyone struggling with eating choices. And Sarah came to this work, honestly. Um, She was diagnosed with polycystic ovary syndrome and prediabetes as a teen. She gained over 100 pounds within a year while struggling with dieting. And it was through trying to figure out what was really going on because she wasn't, she didn't lack willpower, even though that's what her doctor said. It was really something else. And so working with her mother who has a PhD and a master's in nutrition science, they were able to figure out how to help her lose weight naturally and how to scale that. And that's how they created Wavelength. Um, And so we're talking about body shame. We're talking about guilt and in the psychology behind all of that. So I think you're going to get so much out of this episode, even if it's just to hear another woman's story about someone who struggled, and then we're able to get through that um, in a holistic and natural way. Um, But also just to give credence to, to anyone's story out there who feels like, man, I'm doing everything that I can, and I'm not seeing results. And just to know that that is absolutely normal, and that you are not at fault, and there is a better way. And guilt and shame have nothing to do with your success on the other side. So I hope you love this episode. I hope you get a ton out of it. If you do, please share it with a friend and keep those reviews coming. Thanks so much. Hey guys, before we dive into this episode, I want to mention show sponsor RS Koso. Koso is a century old traditional fermented drink out of Japan, and it's made from more than a hundred vegetables, fruits, and plants. And because it's fermented, it contains probiotics, prebiotics, and postbiotics. And it tastes really good. Actually, it's like a sweet Japanese plum juice. And I did the three day cleanse last summer, and it came in this very tall, beautiful bottle with beautiful packaging. I almost didn't want to open it. Um, And I was afraid that I was going to be really tired and moody when doing a cleanse because that's pretty typical for me. Um, But it actually ended up having more energy and my skin was glowing. Also, people love Koso for helping them lose weight. You know, it's all about gut health. When your gut is healthy, you're going to be letting go of a lot of toxins and things that actually cause inflammation. So this is a great product also for weight loss. If you are interested in checking out Koso for yourself, be sure to use my code unstressed and head on over to rskoso.com. That's R-S-K-O-S-O.com. Well, hello, Sarah. Welcome to the show. I'm so glad that you're here. Thanks so much for having me, Liz. Yeah. I mean, just to, to kind of give the audience some background about you and, and Wavelength as a whole, what, what experiences in your life led you to creating Wavelength and what happened to, to bring it to the world? Yeah. So I learned really early in life, like before I was 10, that my body and my weight were a big problem. I was diagnosed with polycystic ovary syndrome when I was 12, um, prediabetes when I was 15. And then my sophomore year of high school, I gained about 150 pounds. And the message that I was getting through this journey was just like have more self-control, have more willpower, go on a diet, solve this problem for yourself. Um, And (laughs) I really tried. I mean, you you can imagine what that experience was like as a teenage girl. I did everything you can think of, you know, fast with lemon juice and cayenne pepper and point systems and public weigh-ins and carb counting and calorie counting, sort of culminating in having weight loss surgery um, when I was 19. And I lost about 80 pounds in the year following that surgery. And in the year following that, I gained it all back. And it was, um, I don't know how to describe it other than crushing it, 
it really eroded my sense of who I was as a competent, intelligent, disciplined person. I really had this idea that none of this was working for me because I was on some deep level, a mess, a failure, incapable of caring for myself. And it, my sense of who I was really, really suffered during that time. Um, it was, I, there's no way around it. It was really, really dark. And my mom uh, was going through kind of a similar journey. She had had a similar story to me um, and she was looking at 50 and, you know, she was struggling to walk around the block and her doctors were telling her that she was going to die if she didn't do something. Um, but <laughs> unlike me, she has several advanced degrees. She's got a PhD. She's got a master's degree in nutrition science, in addition to an additional master's degree um, in, in statistics. And she started really questioning the premise that this was about willpower or about strength of character. She was like, wait a second here. I, I'm not a person who struggles with self-discipline. I, I performed really well in school. I, she, at this time, she was the director of corporate analytics at a fortune 500 company. Um, she really started questioning the sort of dominant belief that we have that struggling with weight, struggling with your relationship with food, struggling with your health is a matter of self-discipline. And she stopped asking the question of what should we be eating? I mean, after all, she has an advanced degree in nutrition. She knew the answer to that question um, and started asking, why do we eat? And how can we change that? Why do we consistently make choices that we know are taking us further away from our goals with food when we don't do this kind of thing anywhere else in the rest of our lives? And what she discovered, of course, is that the behavioral, the metabolic, the neurological patterns that underlie our eating choices are complex, but it has nothing to do with the quality of your character. It has nothing to do with discipline or willpower. Um, and by really addressing the root causes of our eating behaviors, we can fundamentally heal our relationship to food and change our health and, and really change our, change our stars in a way. Um, and so she lost about 170 pounds. I lost about 150 pounds. And this wow. was, this was about 12 years ago now. Um, and so together we worked in, in over really over a very long period of time, we worked to build Wavelength, um, which as you know, is now in the app store. And it's really about, it's really about fundamentally changing the patterns that govern your eating choices so that you don't have to diet anymore. <laughs> um, because the verdict's really back on dieting that it doesn't work. God, I mean, I just think about like, what if your mom didn't have those advanced degrees? What if she just simply didn't stop and question what the doctors were telling her? I mean, this app would never have been created and, you know, your health wouldn't have be, wouldn't be where it is now. I mean, that's just incredible. That one little moment that she yeah. had. Yeah, absolutely. And she's, I mean, she's just an incredibly tenacious person in general, um, and always questioning, always looking for what's really going on. Um, but I think about that a lot. I think about the other the other path that I could have lived where I'm still, I mean, millions and millions of people are still there where they're having this fight with themselves, where they're steeped in shame that they absolutely do not deserve. Mm -hmm. um, and it honest, it makes me extremely emotional and it makes me a little angry, to be honest with you. Yeah. So what do you think is the biggest misconception, you know, besides the discipline factor, why do you think so many women, especially and men are, are frustrated? They, do, they don't know what to do when there's just so much information out there on the internet, like do this, do this, do this, follow this plan to the T and you will lose this much weight in three weeks. Like, why is it still such an issue? What is at the root? It's because basically everything that's out there is what I'd call a, a Band-Aid solution, right? Um, so there are really three levers that we have to lose weight and every diet program out there pushes on one of these three levers. How, what you eat, when you eat, and those are really both about insulin management um, and hormone management. And then there's how much you eat, calorie restriction. Um, and 
when we really change our diet, when we cut out carbs, when we start eating, you know, a thousand, 1100 calories a day, we're going to see results for some short period of time. But the fact of the matter is that when we don't change uh, the sort of fundamental metabolic processes that are happening in our body, the fundamental neurological processes that are happening in our body, um, that's only going to be sustainable for so long. And for some people, you know, you see that they can exercise that incredible self-restraint for a couple of years. Most people know that experience of like having it only last for a day. Mm -hmm. Um, But like, you know, the fact of the matter is that people want there to be some magic way of eating that's going to solve this problem, but we really need to go a layer or two underneath that. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there are a lot of ways to eat that work with your lifestyle, that work with your your goals and your values um, that can result in you living like the healthiest, happiest life that you want to be living. But the the food just tackling the food itself is is a band-aid approach that's never going to get you where you're going long term yeah absolutely and and don't we lose motivation so quickly you know it's always great at the start and then a weekend like you're tired you know you can't force yourself to do it there has to be something more absolutely you've hit the nail on the head we there are really two different kinds of motivational processes that happen in the brain. Um, One is motivation away from something, right? This is, you know, like everybody's had this experience of seeing a picture of themselves and thinking really cruel thoughts and deciding like, okay, diet starts tomorrow. This is happening. I can't live like this anymore. Right. And that is, that's what we would call motivation away from something for sure, because it's this deep negative emotional experience that you would like very much to be over. It's a neurological process that doesn't look so different from like (laughs) running away from a danger or dealing with social rejection. Like when we were in hunter gatherer societies and that was an existential issue. Um, but the issue with that is that it, it exhausts those neurochemicals, the neurological processes actually exhaust pretty quickly. So we, this shows up in our lives where like, we can be so, so dead serious, so dead serious about the changes that we're going to make. And then as you mentioned, something changes, maybe things get stressful or honestly, maybe we just stop feeling, maybe things get better and we're not feeling that acute sense of shame. Um, and the neurological process resolves and we're exactly back where we started. But then there's a different kind of motivational process that happens in the brain, motivation toward something. Um, and this really is about, I mean, it sounds super cheesy, but the reality is that this is what we talk about when we talk about hope. It's a fundamental belief that a different future is possible for you. You can see it. You can feel it. You really understand what that like in a deep emotional level, understand what this different life is going to look like for you and what the benefits of it are going to feel like. And that's a motivation that can be sustained. Mm -hmm. And so like so much in the wellness world right now is just... Um, based on this motivation from what am I doing wrong? I suck. How can I stop sucking? But until we start to really tap into what we want for ourselves on a, on a, an emotional level, even on a spiritual level, um, it's going to be really hard to sustain the changes that are going to get us where we want to go. Oh my God. That's so incredible. I've never heard it put that way. I mean, I've definitely experienced it, but then I've never heard it laid out in this way or the, like, it's almost, almost like positive versus negative, you know, fear versus love. How does Wavelength fit into that then? Like what, do, what has Wavelength built on this app that can actually, you know, take advantage of that and help women and men all over the world actually access that, that positive reinforcement, that positive motivation? Honestly, everything about the app is built to help people access that. It's happening on an explicit level, right? We take a lot of time to help you understand what your deep motivation is. Why Why are you driven to this change beyond the photo that you saw that you made you feel bad or the fact that your pants don't fit? Um, even beyond you know, your doctor told you to lose weight, which is still motive. It's still just fear. Mm-hmm. Um, 
helping you access this vision for the life that you want and how you want to feel. So that's happening on an explicit level, but it's also about building a foundation of self-compassion and letting go of the shame that like we've all really been conditioned to feel about our weight and our eating habits and our bodies. Um, And so it's a journey of coming to accept the fact that you're normal. Most people are struggling with this and then building um, building some real clarity around what you're driving for. And then of course, this is paired with customized nutrition advice. So they're working together in tandem because it's not, our minds are not the only thing that are interfering with our ability to like feel great in our bodies, right? What we're eating is interfering with that. The stressors in our lives are interfering with that. And so Wavelength really looks at the whole picture, helps you put the puzzle together so that you can make really permanent change. And I always say like, if it feels like intense deprivation, it's absolutely not going to work. So we're going to have to find a different path. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think just going back, like how open you were and honest with you, with us about your story, you know, it's deeply personal. Like it's hard to stand up in front of people and say, Hey, you know, I was so unhappy with my body. You know, this was, this was my weight. Like it's hard. Do you feel like do you feel like it is a hard thing or do you feel like you have a greater sense of purpose? There are all these other women and men out there who need this app, who need this help on a deeper level. Do you feel like that's really driving you? Yeah. I mean, both things are true, right? Especially at the beginning, I sort of saw, I saw what needed to happen. I saw that somebody had to speak honestly about the experience of having a fat body, about the experience of trying to lose weight. Somebody had to like tell that story in a way that wasn't just like, I used to be bad and now I'm good. Um, But, you know, I was still really feeling enormous amounts of shame about it, especially the the failed weight loss surgery. My God, when that happened, I told, I told no one I was having the surgery. People had to have known that something was going on with me, but I, I told almost no one and to, to undergo what is, what has a reputation as the easy way out. I assure Mm -hmm. you it is not to undergo that experience, to pay an exorbitant amount of money to make it happen and then to have to fail at it was just astonishingly painful. And that is not something that I was able to talk about for a really long time. But so, so I saw this problem. I saw this need. I was like, I, somebody should be saying what this is really like um, because it's important. But what I found is the more vulnerable you are and the more that you see that you're not alone, the better you feel, the less shame you feel. And so what I understood was going to be a healing journey for other people actually really turned into a healing journey for me because not only was I making people feel better with my story, but they were coming to me and they were saying, this happened to me. Thank you. And I realized that like I was getting the community that I had wanted also through creating wavelength. And now at this point, I'm not going to say I'm never ashamed of my body. Of course, I'm like a human woman in 2021, but like, um, but I feel a lot better about it and it takes up way less of my mind share. And now I do feel really motivated to like reach reach in and like help people see that there's nothing wrong with them um, and help them feel better about themselves. So it's really been a journey to me for me where like humiliation was strong when I first started talking about this stuff. But over the years, um, I've really healed and now I feel like it's really my calling. This episode is also brought to you by Lugs. Lugs is a brand you probably remember it started back in the 90s, but they've never wavered from having their pulse on what is stylish and also realistically priced. I wore the boots today on my trip to Costco because why else do you leave the house? And it was so cute. It totally uplifted my entire outfit. I felt like I was kind of on a runway in a lot of ways because it was just so chic and so cute with what I was wearing. And I was actually wearing leggings with it. So it's surprising that I felt so 
I don't know, so chic, but that's kind of the beauty of the brand. And if you use my code unstressed, that will save you 30% off at lugs.com. That's L U G Z.com. And just something that I want you to remember about the brand. It's a great brand, not just for you, but for the entire family. So they're stylish, realistically priced and great for everyday wear. And one, another thing that I think is really important is that they're really comfortable. So not only are you going to feel cute when you go out to the grocery store or wherever you're going, but you're also going to feel comfortable and chic at the same time. So be sure to head on over to lugs.com and use my code unstressed to save. Oh, I love that. Can you share some success stories, not using specific names or anything like that, but just stories that have kind of stayed with you as the app has, you know, aged and developed and reached more people? Yeah, absolutely. Um, two people really stand out to me. Um, as three, really. So there, there's one of our first earliest beta users who has lost more than a hundred pounds wow. since she started working with us. Um, and who's just like, I'm, I'm so impressed by how truly comfortable she seems to be with herself and with her journey now and how settled she is in this new way of living. Um, and then, there's another woman who I feel like we've really been on a journey together um, who I think has really battled her weight her entire life, but is now seeing results without beating. Like she's seeing results in getting where she wanted to go. She first, she uncovered that like she had connected thinness to all sorts of ideas about who she could be. And she's really been able to untangle that, right? Maybe I do want to lose weight, but what I really want is a sense of power and belonging. Mm -hmm. And I can pursue these things at the same time. And, and when you disentangle these things from each other, when you separate out what you want for yourself from your weight, and you start to approach these tasks separately, the, your ability to just accept your body and be in your body where it's at really increases. And I feel like I've seen her flourish. She's lost weight, but she's not obsessing about it. She's not beating herself up and she's kind of marveling at it. She's like, I can't believe this is happening. (laughs) Um, And, you know, she reminds me of myself a lot. And so that's been really emotional for me. Uh, well, they say, I mean, people who heal themselves, like when they create programs and things like that, they're actually healing younger versions of themselves. Like we're giving back what we needed at that time. That's exactly how I feel. Wavelength is what I wish, I wish had existed when I was going through all of this. Okay. So, you know, the woman listening to this is like, okay, I'm definitely interested. <laughs> how long does it take? And I know I kind of hate this question, but at the same time, people are thinking it, how long does it take to start seeing results? Is it like, six months is like, do you have to go through a whole mental reboot? Like what, what does it entail really? It's so it's really, (laughs) it's like wildly faster than you think. Uh, but also feels kind of weird if I'm being honest. So what happens is, um, it really depends a lot on the person and your custom nutrition plan, like what the first thing you do when you get into the program actually is. But we definitely see people start to lose weight right away. But then the real magic happens. Uh, and this is what happens, I think, surprisingly fast is like you lose weight and that's great, but you start feeling a better about yourself so fast. And then it has this really powerful kind of self-reinforcing impact where all of a sudden you stop berating yourself. The the cruel inner critic gets quiet Mm -hmm. and you're moving through the world with self-compassion while you're having some weight loss success. And the fact that you feel so empowered and you're seeing success on all sides kind of reinforces. And so I think like how long does quote, quote unquote, how long does wavelength take? It really depends on who you are and how much weight you want to lose and what you're going through at that time. But like, you're going to start seeing results immediately. Some folks complete, um, sort of three months in the program and they're like, Oh my God, I'm changed forever. Thank you so much. Other folks are like, I, I love this. It makes me feel better. I never want to stop using it. Um, and so it's really about you and your journey and what you're getting out of it. I love that. So, I mean, obviously mindfulness is a huge part of the app and the program. How, how important is mindfulness to you? Not only as an entrepreneur, but for the users who are getting into this, because some people have like zero experience with mindfulness. And like you said, it feels really weird and like awkward. Like, so talk to us about that. So 
<laughs> I let me start out by saying like I uh, I want to I really like, you know, I my, my my parents are both scientists. I'm really my parents' daughter. Like I felt so what I would say I would describe it as I'm allergic to the woo. Like I was just <laughs> like I don't know about all this stuff. This seems awfully new agey. And my mom, of course, was like ever the trailblazer. She was like, Sarah, the empirical evidence for mindfulness and meditation and the changes that happen in your brain can't be denied. Plus, you should try it. It's going to make you feel better. Um, and like I, I dabbled for a while. I like couldn't really make it a habit. Um, and then I really started to apply what I knew about basic behavior science, basic behavioral neuroscience about how to build habits um, and how to, you know, change routines. And so what Wavelength really is, is an intersection of kind of the science of mindfulness so that you, like me, could have your skepticism um, maybe healed a little bit, science of mindfulness, and then combining routine building with with meditation. I had one user that was like, I think you tricked me into becoming a meditator. I was like, <laughs> yes, that's the goal is that it shouldn't feel hard. Um, mm. But it actually plays an enormous role in the mechanism of the program. Mindfulness is the most powerful tool we have to literally change the neurological structures in our brains. There's an expression, um, neurons that fire together, wire together. So what that means is that when we repeat a behavior, as it becomes a habit, there's literally like a, a little structure of neurons in our brain that gets formed that makes it easy for us to repeat that pattern over and over and over again. And it's self-reinforcing. The more we do it, the stronger it gets, the more likely we are to do it again. What mindfulness and breath work and meditation can do is when they're deployed correctly, they can actually help us change those patterns over time, changing the physical structures in our brains that drive our behaviors. And so um, mindfulness is like a really core component of that, what I was talking about at the beginning of the conversation of really fundamentally changing the patterns that drive your eating behaviors and just makes you feel it just makes you feel way better. <laughs> I know, I know. Like I'll finish a meditation session and I'll feel like high because it's just like the natural endorphins kind of get released. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I don't know. And like for me, when I first started meditating like 10, 15 years ago, I wasn't even aware of the negative voice until mm -hmm. I sat down and I actually like observed it from, from like a bird's eye view. And it was surprising to me. I mean, I was like, whoa, like, whoa, really? Like, because it had always been running, but I just thought that that's, that's what I was thinking. That was really, you know, the reality of the situation. And it was just, it was just not. Absolutely. I mean, that is the, the most insidious thing about shame is that mm -hmm. it doesn't sound mean, right? When it's happening to us, we don't think, gosh, that's mean. Why am I being so mean? It sounds insightful. It sounds yeah. true. And it often feels like that, critical voice is the thing that is keeping you from going off the rails entirely, right? Yeah. If I, if I didn't hate my body, wouldn't I just like let it get out of control? And it's, it's hard to tackle that head on, right? Because it really does feel true in the moment. Um, but it's not true, right? One way, kind of useful way you can tell the difference between like an analytical thought that you're having and shame is that like, if I heard someone else saying this to their child, what would I think about that? Mm. Um, and if you're horrified, it's a pretty good sign that you're just, that it's shame. But once you can kind of identify that that's what's happening, once you have that little bit of mental space, the exercise that I like to give people isn't to try to argue with it. You're never going to win that argument, but just say like, I hear you. Maybe you're right. Maybe I am hopelessly disgusting, but I'm going to try something different today. Mm. You could, you're just, you're welcome to come along. You're probably right. We can come back to you tomorrow. Today, this is what we're going to try out. And over time, it gets quieter and quieter and quieter and you can move yeah. forward. But it is so hard to get that first distance to say, hey, this isn't the way that I want to be talking to myself. And it's not true. 
Man, when I, this just reminds me, like when I had Martha back on the show, she talked about the influence that we have on our children. It's not what we say to them. It's not what we tell them. It's what we, it's how we treat ourselves and what we yeah. say to ourselves. So that just sparked something huge. I mean, for women who are moms, who are trying to get a hold of the shame and their, their own sense of body image and their own sense of worth, this doesn't only impact them. This impacts their daughters, even their sons. I mean, I had friends who, you know, their brothers had eating disorders as well. So it's like, this is just a multi-generational impact that you've created that's going to be helping the mother and her child. Who, You know, probably most of our kids are young listening to this, but you've got plenty of middle schoolers and high schoolers who need this as well. Do you have younger users as well? So we're only for users over 18 right now, um, largely because I think that the a lot of the emotional regulation tools that we have in Wavelength would be really useful. But I talk a lot about what it's like to grow up in our society and the ideas that we're all instilled with. And I do think that to some extent, young women who are growing up today have it a little bit different than the way we were growing up. And I I'm not interested in exposing them to those ideas. <laughs> um, and so I think a version of Wavelength for children, you know, might not be so articulate about what that shame is saying, right? That's a really common shared experience for adult women. But I don't know that I'd want to put those ideas into a 12-year-old mm-hmm. who had never heard them before. Um, and so it would be a little gentler on that front, I think. But one thing that I do see, and I, I'm curious, Liz, if this resonates with you, is like, Oftentimes, by the time women come to Wavelength, by the time moms come to Wavelength, they are already worried about what they're doing to their kids' relationship to food and their bodies. And they can see that they they understand what their mom's relationship to food and their her body did to them, and they don't want to pass that inheritance on to their kids. At the same time, they are scared. They want their body to be different. They're scared for their health. They feel out of control with food. And the when the only tool in your arsenal is dieting um, and your kids are getting to see that, it really leaves you between a rock and a hard place. And I, and I find that a lot of women are really confused and frightened and stressed about how to navigate that exact situation. And what I always want to tell them is like, what you're modeling, the most important thing that you can model to your kids isn't a perfect relationship with food because nobody has that and your kid is not going to have that. What you can model to your kid is self-acceptance for where you are on the journey. Mom's trying to be nicer to herself right now. Mom's got some concerns about her health and wants to be healthier. And and just like trying to let go of the self-criticism about where you are. And that's actually the best gift you can give to your child. Mm-hmm. Um because they're going to find themselves in this situation someday and seeing you and navigate it with compassion is going to be a really important kind of talisman for them as opposed to like keeping it a secret or never having a problem, which is of course not how anybody navigates the world. Right. I feel like that's such an archaic way of of dealing with it. You know, the parents in the 50s and 60s, everything was perfect. And, you know, meanwhile, they're like raging alcoholics and (laughs) dealing with stuff in there on the backside. Totally. that does, I mean, I feel like our role as parents is to educate, is to help our kids expand and, and really foster a greater sense of compassion for themselves, but also for others, especially in 2021. Um, I think there's just so many broader implications of this app, you know, not only for the woman using it, but also for her children. So even if the kids can't use it, I know they're going to get benefit from that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's something that I think about a lot because, I mean, kids present an incredible opportunity for healing, right? They're in some ways a clean slate. And so um, when I, I mentioned that wavelength is what I wish I had, like truly what I wish I had was something that was different from the jump. And to be able, like when I say from the jump, I mean from my early childhood, of course. <laughs> um, and I think being able to gift that to your children is just incredible. I do too. I do too. Okay. So we're coming to the end. I can't believe it, but 
with everything that you have studied and your mom has studied and that you've built and, and, and everything that you intuitively know, what is one thing that you want the woman listening to this to remember from this talk? You're normal. If you're struggling with food and your body and your weight, you are a member of the 80% of women who report that this is happening to them. That's an old statistic. It's probably higher since everything that's happened in the last 18 months. You're not extra bad. There's nothing especially wrong with you. You are in really good company. And you can forgive yourself for what's happening. Um, And tomorrow can be a new day. Mm, I love that. Okay, so where can the audience find Wavelength? Find out more about you. Give us all the links. Yeah, so uh, you can find us at wavelength.live backslash unstressed. And we've got a 50% off discount code for you there. So if you want to download the app, you can poke around on the website, lots of information there, but I highly recommend just downloading and getting started. A lot of our behavior change tools are totally free forever. You can listen to the first three of the daily audio episodes there as well. Um, And then if you're curious, sign up, we can get you your customized nutrition plan and off to the races. Beautiful. Sarah, thank you so much for for sharing your journey and your story and then creating this incredible app. I know the positive ripple effect is going to be helping so many women all over the world. So thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Liz. Thanks again to our sponsor, Coso Drink. Be sure to head on over to rscoso.com. That's rskoso.com and use my code unstressed to save. You have been listening to the Motherhood Unstressed Podcast. Please be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast.